KP! KP in the house! You already know how to bounce! It's Disney Detonation coming at you from the Transfer of Co <coughs> Content Fair Use Studios in New Jersey, and I'm your host. And today's episode is a Disney vlogger detonation. It's about our good friend, Kalo Pilo Palo. I was planning on... <coughs> Excuse me. Having this episode out um, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday last week, but I got sick. I, I had, like, flu-like symptoms. I was sick, like, really sick Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Then Monday we had a storm roll through here, so I wasn't able to... Uh, really do anything on that day and I, I i was almost didn't want to do it today because i didn't want to like gross people out with coughing and and you know schnotting and, and i didn't want to be i know how irritating it is when somebody vlogs themselves while they're chewing gum and eating food so i didn't want to subject you to the same grossness i guess but i'm going to try to hit the uh the cough button the, the mute button on the audio as i go along here if i do have to cough or Whatever else. So the first clip is called the KP Thanksgiving debacle. So I'm just going to, I'm I, sorry I'm low energy. I'm just going to try to get through this today. And because um, I, I want to get another vlog out this week and also the the Christmas episode. But I, I'm not so sure I'm going to do another KP, uh, KP vlog the next couple of episodes. Because I'm getting kind of bored of these two. It's, it's, it's gone from funny to kind of sad. But anyway, so the first clip is called the KP Thanksgiving debacle. Um, also, I don't know if serial. Tom is going to be on film, Casey's yeah, dad. I don't know. I'm still trying to trying to work my magic, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe they'll make an appearance. Uh, it's going to be have to be you doing the asking. Mm, probably. So. We're obviously not pushing it. We didn't get Casey's family here in the video. And um, we didn't really try. even try or ask <laughs> other than, like, I would hint yeah. it to Tom. But other than that, we didn't really try. Well, it certainly seems like you didn't ask because they deleted, you had to delete four uh, episodes that revolved around recording this man's home, the interior, the exterior of his home, and his neighborhood. So I'm, I, I haven't seen any discussion in, as far as in his videos, maybe because I skip through them. I don't sit there and listen to him from, from beginning to end. Uh, maybe he did. I didn't catch it. And I, I haven't looked at his Twitter uh, account, so I don't know if he mentioned it there, but I would imagine he didn't because he doesn't have a... You know, hair on his ass. But um, another thing is, calling this man Tom, unless, you know, let's just say his name is Mr. Jones. You're dating this young lady, and unless he said, don't call me Mr. Jones, call me Tom, it's a pretty big disrespect from where I'm coming from. So, all right, so let's move on. The next clip is called Fake Annunciation. So it seems as though, because Kylo Palo Palo makes all these, these errors in grammar, errors in enunciation, pronunciation, um, knowing what words mean. He does this thing now where he tries to pass it all off as a joke. Like, like so here's an example of that. Pa trying to pass off his, I don't want to say ignorance, but whatever, as a joke. The oregula on here is really good. Oregula. Oregula. <laughs> I mean, stupidity is not funny, dude. And here's him not trying to pass it off as a joke. Hello. Hello. Actually, there's quite a few people using using the gym. Decent sized gym, enough equipment to to do whatever you wish, whatever you want. The views though from the gym are, are immaculate. The views though from the gym are, are immaculate. <laughs> All right. So the next clip is called the party contradiction. So. So the he this is vlog where he went to the to Magic Kingdom during the not so or not so the the uh, Mickey's very merry Christmas and he's like saying all the naysayers are going to say there's a problem with attendance and historically around this time of year Disney is like you know bang and the attendance is off the charts which I think it was yesterday or today was it was you know normal sort of and. Um, so he starts the vlog off saying that the naysayers are going to say that, you know, things are bad. And then he proceeds to say things are bad. Like, this is not normal for this time of the year. So here we go. It's the, the party contradiction. We're probably going to get the naysayers in here on how Disney is, you know, dying, blah, 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 blah. That's not the case. What? Over? Did you say Over? Nothing is over until we decide it is. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? It really is the party aspect. But I was expecting 
more, you know? It's December. Wow! The hub is so crazy. You never see this in December. Ever. All right. There quite literally is nobody here. All right, so here's the end of that vlog where, like, I, is it, I don't know if I, if he's drunk or what. He just seems a little out of sorts here. So I figured I'd, this clip is called Christmas Party Contradiction Diatribe. I feel like that is one of the biggest things to know when you come to Disney World. Do not, not go to Magic Kingdom on a party day. Go on the party days. That is what's going on. A little bit thrown off because I thought it would still be December. Well, it's December. People would still would still be wanting to go. For some reason, it scares them off. It scares them off. Anyways, with that, I'll see you guys tomorrow. And that was it for your daily dose. <laughs> Bro, what the fuck is he on? So the next clip: Do not not go to Disney. Um, you know, on a party day. So the next three clips are him going to space 2020. And I mean, I, this guy, he, the more and more I watch this guy, the more he reminds me of a used car salesman. So here's the part one of space 2020. Oh my gosh. It smells so good. Oh, it smells so good. Check out the drink menu. It's like a little spinner. Moon rocks. Like it makes it really fun to kind of just, See what drinks they have. This is really unique. You don't see this on, on Disney property at all. <laughs> we gotta get one. AC. You gotta. You have to get a drink menu in the shape of a star wheel to bring them. Now here's what I'm talking about. It's like a, a, a shitty you car, used car salesman. He he's got to upgrade to his seat yet. He's he, which he knows already, but yet he can't tell her. I mean, I, I just, just I don't get it. Follow me. They're actually gonna move us. Follow me. I don't know. They just said, follow me. I know, right? <laughs> so Every stupid. time I come here, I mean, this is my second time. My second time. Always hook it up. They always hook it up. I love this place. Every time. <laughs> now we have like the middle. Cool, right? Not like it like entirely matters, but now we can kind of just see everything in a way. I love how they uh, pour their water here. It's really <laughs> cool. It's everything is top notch at Space 220. It's top notch. I love how they pour their water. Let's not forget the Bonnet Creek episode later on here. So the next is part two. And this is pretty interesting because he starts. He, all right, let me just play it. Anyway, this isn't even operated by Disney. It's a third party. It's operated by Delaware North. And it's absolutely delicious. It's absolutely delicious. It's operated by the Pantina Group, which is a subsidiary of Delaware North. And it, not only do they to uh, Space 2020, but as you can see here, there's several other restaurants that they do. Um, there's another one underneath here, and they do several in Disney Springs. So he didn't even realize this until the server told him. And it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, see, if you're lucky enough, they choose you to go outside in one of these astronaut suits. No, I'm totally not making that up. You can go outside, and I think they just picked Casey. That ain't funny. All right. So here's part three. <laughs> Babe. Dude. Babe. I love Space 220. Like, it's unbelievable. I love my pork chop. The flavor in her dish is unbelievable. Unbelievable. And this is way better than Disney food. It is upscaled. Come to one of these restaurants because they are really upscaled. We're blown away. It's just like, you know, there's park food. And then there's like fine dining, exquisite food. Is that the right word? Exquisite food? It's exquisite? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I almost feel like it's the same camera angle and the same shirt. <clears throat> All right. So the next clip is called Airport Griff. Now, I found this hilarious because he's fascinated by this uh, a girl who's doing a hard sell for like hand cream in an airport. Now, I don't know about the rest of you, but like, this happens all the time here. Like, like for a while in every mall, if you went in, <laughs> they were hold on. They were trying to get they would try to get you to buy like a uh, like a like a massage chair or a, like a neck massager thing. So this, this hardcore they would sell where they would grab you, bring you back to this little square in the middle of the 
vestibule of the mall and, and try to sell you this stuff. It, it also I've also seen it for like sunglasses, cologne, and of course other you know uh, creams and s- stuff like that. And, and to them, this is they've never seen this before. And and I cut this down to, to, to forty seconds. I think he talked about this for. I mean, it was more than two minutes. It might have been three minutes of this. I mean, it's ridiculous. Oh, oh, oh. Here she goes, trying to get some money. Here she goes, take this, take this. Oh, she didn't fall for the trap. Where is she? Nope. Oh, come follow me. <laughs> Look at that. This girl's so good. So good. She's so good. She's so she good. She's getting the cum. Come try this. Pro- but okay. the thing is, they, they're targeting older women. I don't know if it, like if that's what the cream's for or what, but it, it seems like the women are the ones that fall for the trap. Good math, mom. I, I was doing girl math. Well, I really older women. I, guys, you're in the I, airport. Just watch this because it's so funny how these people just grab them. I mean, you guys just saw it. It is, is so good. fascinating. That girl is good. She's good. She's good. You are a straight chump, and your content is garbage. Was that a god tier sale or? Or what? So the next clip is called Airport Plan. I just thought this was funny. I have an idea. I think one day Kyle and I should go to the airport with packed bags, not knowing where we're gonna go, and then we should just like buy one of the first planes. Oh my god! Like you know, like totally. Yeah, I know. Like totally. Should we do that? That'd be cool. That'd be like, what are the what are the options? At least we'd have options, you know. Like give us the options on. It'd be cool. I'd make a good vlog. Let us know we should do that. I plan. Trust me. I plan. What are the options? What are the options? All right. So the next clip is called Club Virgin. I thought this was hilarious because this guy's 30 years old. He's never been to a club. And then on top of that, he he goes and says that he's never done anything like that with his girlfriend before. So he's never gone out other than, I guess, to a restaurant or a Disney event. I mean, this speaks for itself. It's called Club Virgin. First time I've ever, this is the first time I'm ever going to like a club. Um, that's the first time I was ever at a club. That was fun fact. The first time Casey and I ever went out together. We don't do that, but fun fact. The first time Casey and I ever went out together. We don't do that, but. I think that that is the coolest club I've ever been to. It's the first one I've ever been to. I've been to a few clubs. (laughs) Boom! Yeah, and she's how much younger than him? All right, so the next clip is called Cancun and Safe, and I thought this was really hilarious because he's videotaped or recording, and um, he's showing you, like, you know, uh, I don't want to say Army personnel, but maybe police walking around with automatic weapons, saying how safe it is. And he went to these, um, I don't know, I forget what, there's a Spanish, or Spanish name for them where they're like swimming holes. And that's where the cartels drop the bodies off, not inside Cancun, but outside of Cancun in these swimming areas. And this just, I just thought this was funny. So we're sitting outside Coco Bongo, and there's just police sitting there with with ARs. It's supposed to be to make the tourists feel safe. Again, it's a really safe area, but it's just so weird to see. You never really see that. It is completely safe. I mean, this area is completely secure. So side note. Spaghetti-o. Hot take. You'll just have police just randomly walk on the beaches here. Why do you do that? That's actually kind of crazy. Just an AR. Well, an AR is walking on the beach. All right. All right, so the next clip is called Epcot Fail. Now, I don't even know why he decided to, to put this up. He um, pretended as though he got some inside information or found something online that said there was a soft opening, but didn't, <laughs> didn't follow up with any other information he just dropped everything i guess everything him going shopping at target and running to epcot to go to this soft opening which was for uh cast members only so here we go real quick break from the vlog at this moment in my day i was headed to target and i got word that world celebration had opened inside epcot one day early before it's supposed to tomorrow december 5th so I rushed on over to Epcot, and this is what played out. All right, here it World is. Celebration. So these walls are still up, and I'm thinking tomorrow these should come down on the 5th. I did see some pictures of people inside, so please let us in. I hear workers. And by the way, I, I every time I clip this guy, I try to, to level off the volume. It's his 
uh, vlog that the volume is jumping up and down. Over there, so I'm kind of confused on how far we can actually go in or if it is access to us right now. This is where I'm thinking we might be able to enter. I'm so confused. No. Still, the walls are up. Hedges are up. I don't think we can get in. What's going on? Disney tricked us. Disney tricked us. It is a cast preview today. I actually saw some stuff online. I thought it was going to be today, but hey, I made a mistake. I, um, I assumed thought it was going to happen, but it didn't. Disney tricked you. We, you didn't follow up with. I mean, like it, from my understanding, there was news articles in uh, in Orlando um, news outlets at eleven o'clock in the morning saying that it was a cast member event. I don't know what time you decided to go there, but it was obviously over. All right. So the next clip is pre Epcot gibberish. Uh, my character. So uh, Epcot opened that uh, that garden area. Where that used to have the uh, was it fountain? I forget what the name of the fountain was. Fountain of Nations, whatever. Um, and this is him going there. This is after the the failure to um, to go to this uh, cast member opening. So here we go. This is what I feel like a lot of people are missing about Disney. It's that excitement. Oh, there's a lot of people here along. It's that uh, that excitement that we're used to feeling in the past years that hasn't always been there and I feel like we've also come accustomed to it. Okay, so I was supposed to meet somebody but I got cold, right? So I was like, oh man, I'm just gonna walk around and get, get a little bit warm, right? So I put the sweatshirt on, I'm gonna put the overalls and go. So, so I'm trying to get around the car park, trying to ride uh, around the K-Genie. We tend to be extra picky. Like people are definitely gonna be picky about the world celebration. I'm not gonna be someone who's picky. So I don't really feel like it's my, in my character to bring light to that. So I don't really feel like it's my, it's in my character to bring light to that. Yeah, I slowed down that last part where he goes, I don't really feel like, and then it's in my character to, to, to be picky, to have an opinion, which turns out that he did have an opinion because he keeps saying that, a, 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 you know, Disney is, re, uh, Epcot's reborn, a blanket has been lifted over. You should have just said nothing and just video showed the, the 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 new area and not said a word about it. But instead, you started to, to pontificate about how you're 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 not going to be negative about it, and then not have an opinion, and then you had an opinion. And here we go, Epcot bullshit. And I'm not here to like critique and do all that nonsense. I'm just happy everything is back. It's how it has been. Well, not really, because it's changed, you know. Epcot is essentially a reborn. I really feel like there, there's going to be some harsh opinions about, you know, I mean, obviously, rightfully rightfully so. There's going to be no place for that on on my channel. Epcot is one. Epcot feels great. But um, I, feel, I feel great about this, and, um, you know, it just feels great. It feels good. I feel like a... A blanket has just been lifted off her head that's been on her head or her head for a while. And uh, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be... Like, how is it not going to be okay? Like, what's going to happen? Somebody's going to throw you off of top of uh, Spaceship Earth? I mean, it's ridiculous. All right, so the next clip is called KP is Scared of Everything. And the, the, the next couple of clips are just satire. Not that most of this wasn't. But. Now, I thought we were going to be walking through the woods, but little did I know they actually have copperheads here in North Carolina. If you know what they are, they're, they're a venomous snake. And I think like right now it's, it would be kind of scary to do that because they would hide under the leaves and stuff. So we're not walking through the woods. I got scared when I was in the woods. I'm like, what are we doing here? My uncle's like, I'm teaching you how to tie a knot. Tons of trails, but right now they're kind of flooded with leaves and the copperheads are kind of throwing me off. Oh my God, Kyle, turn around. No. Turn around. What? Oh my, dude, come on, don't scare me like that. I was thinking there's a big grasshopper on me. All right, these waves look way bigger once you get close. Not gonna lie, I'm a little bit scared. I'm scared of the ocean, okay? In forest. Don't take a nap back there. Mosquitoes. I think you're being dramatic. No, I swear there's mosquitoes. And yeah, I added the mosquito and cricket sounds. All right, so the next clip is called Mommy. I'm surprised that he likes it because it's two of his least favorite things, soup and carrots. 
And he's cleaned his plate. <laughs> Good job. Thanks. We're all proud of you. You did so great. Well, everybody, unfortunate news here. My, my parents just got their flight delayed. So I had all intention of them, them, them being in this video, but I have something better. Oh, I have something better. <laughs> no, not better than your parents. Stop it. True. And Casey always coming in clutch with the, I almost said the sunscreen, the hand sanitizer. <laughs> oh, was, you know, I'm going to drop back to this third uh, space clip episode because I wanted to point something out here that I didn't prior. So here we go. <laughs> Babe. Dude. Babe. I love Space Tutorial. So if you noticed, he calls her Babe. Babe. And she is not happy with it. And th this is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> Babe. Dude. Babe. I love Space 220. So, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but where I'm from, it's a little disingenuous to call... When I hear a, a man calling his girlfriend, Babe, yo, Babe, Babe. It's just completely I, I mean not just disingenuous it almost seems disrespectful but that's just me and apparently she don't like it either so the next the end of this is called the mix and i'm going to end it this week uh with the mix i'm sorry i'm not as uh coherent as normally i'm still i feel like i'm in a fog like i don't even feel like i'm doing this now i feel like i'm watching from above i, I don't know if it makes sense so this next clip is called The Mix, and I will have uh, the Christmas episode out this week and possibly another episode, but I'm not sure if it's going to be a mix or just... It's going to be a mix because I, I can't keep doing this guy over and over again. They're, these two are just... I don't know. All right, so here we go, The Mix. And this might be some of the best shrimp I think I've ever had in my life. It is that good. I mean, it's not like I need the extra leg room because I'm a short guy, but I'm going to take the extra leg room here. And welcome to Disney World on Christmas. I mean, if you think about it, the reason why you rope drop Gideon's is so you don't have to wait. But if they don't open until 10, I'm going to be waiting as long as I would have been waiting if I got in line at 10. So this just might be pointless. Wait, wait. Do you remember this? Yeah. Bad lips? Uh -huh. Oh gosh, this just reminds me of school, elementary school. Yeah, I remember these. Not a fan. Time. You enjoyed these? Oh yeah. Oof. Shot Cindy! Cheers, cheers. Guava and I think tequila. Oh, that's a chugger. You know what I like more than the pork belly? The butter. This butter is unreal. You know, again, a very far-fetched stretch, but just some notes. Uh, that's ridiculous, Mo. And transmission.